degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. All right, it's just after 7 o'clock on this uh, Wednesday evening. You're very welcome along to Off the Ball. Adrian with you this evening. Plenty to get through. We're going to be joined on the line by Johnny Cooper in just a little bit. He's fresh from that uh, five in a row with the Dubs, of course, and plenty of uh, interesting things to talk to him about, including the uh, regrets of the red card, obviously the first day and getting his head back in the game uh, to have a pretty uh, good display in the uh, replay win over Kerry last weekend, so plenty uh, to talk to Johnny about, so that will be coming your way. Uh, in about a half an hour, a little bit less than that, uh, Johnny Cooper there. We're always going to talk rugby, obviously we're on the brink of Rugby World Cup, it all kicks off on Friday. Matt Williams and Andy Nicholl, who's the former Scotland scrum half, are going to join us to uh, look ahead to that Ireland-Scotland game on Sunday morning, and there's also some other interesting stuff to talk about, including the madness from uh, Camp Wales today, as Rob Holly has been sent off for alleged a breach of betting regulations. That will unfold, I'm sure, and the details of it will unfold over the next few weeks. So that's to come too. And also we'll get the lads' thoughts on the um, narrative around uh, South African rugby at the minute and um, the uh, allegations of uh, uh, doping as well in relation to South African rugby generally. So that's uh, to come with the two lads. That'll be on your way after about 8 o'clock or thereabouts. A big night in the Champions League again as Olympiacos make it 2-2 from the penalty spot. We're going to get the thoughts of our studio guest, one of whom you just heard uh, with a sharp intake of breath there uh, in just a moment's time. Kenny Cunningham is going to join us a bit later on. Uh, Shawnee Maguire as well to talk uh, Ireland and Preston. And we're going to talk about Antonio Brown, obviously a massive talking point at the off-season, uh, but uh, now serious allegations against him. And so John Gonzalez from The Ringer is going to join us to discuss all of that. One of those sharp intakes of breath. Richie McCormick. The asthma's a devil this time of year. It was not, it wasn't the asthma. And uh, Damien Delaney, how are you getting on? Good, yourselves? You've, night one didn't go so bad, so you were sort of, you were all right to come back again for night two. Well, you know, I just dealt with Dublin today, so I was more than happy to come back. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like, uh, we, should, we should mention that it was a uh, penalty, a pretty soft penalty. Uh, no, I think it was penalty. Yeah, yeah. in, in Europe, it was penalty. Bob right. uh, yeah. Wayne made a meal of it, but he was shoved over yeah, pretty, he, pretty he he stood in his foot, and I think once it's contacted like that in the box, um, in Europe, definitely, and with, the, with VAR, I think it was always going to be given. And no doubt about the uh, penalty taker, there wasn't a huge sort of conflap. Was there a com- penalty by committee? No, Valbuena had the ball under his arm. It was determined that this was going to be his and his alone. It wasn't going to be a, a Ross Barkley William situation. Yeah, yeah. I think in Europe they definitely must set their penalty takers before the game and everyone adheres to it. I thought everybody used to do that, but it turns out that's not quite. Well, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> but recently, uh, maybe maybe not. No, nah, isn't it? Um, yeah, it happened again, obviously, last night, the Chelsea game, Ross Barkley. I mean, it didn't matter that he whether he missed it or scored it. Really, for me, it's like. It's the stuff that went down before. People miss penalties all the time. And yeah. there's not much said about it. But it was just a... It seemed like at one point William was saying to him, no, no, listen, this is, is mine. The, the explanation by Frank Lampard afterwards didn't manage to solve things either way because he said, after the game, he said that when they're on the pitch together, the William and I think... I don't know if it was Giroud or the nominated uh, penalty takers. Forgive me if it wasn't Giroud. Jorginho was a certain Jorginho, them, sorry, yeah. pardon me, I tell lie. It was Jorginho and William are their determined penalty takers. But when Ross Barkley's on the pitch, then he's the penalty taker. So how does that work exactly when there's... I, I can't help but think that maybe Frank Lambert's protecting Barkley a little right. bit there. Uh, just, <laughs> you, you know... I, I, yeah, because, you know, it's like he knows the, the, the who hard it's going to be if he says no, he, he took responsibility off Willian and it's going to cause Chelsea and Barkley an awful lot of problems. Yeah. So I think he's just came out and tried to take this thing over the best he possibly can. Um, but it certainly looks like William was a designated yeah, taker. It certainly was. We'll come back to that one a bit later on and plenty more stuff to get through as well. So you mentioned you've been hanging around Dublin for the last uh, couple of days. Is there much, when you're walking about the streets, do you get much recognition factor of people oh, going? Oh, no, I sat in the cinema today and watched the movie. Not a bit of it. What did you go and see? <laughs> I went to see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Ah, right. Yeah. Any so, good? Uh, absolutely fantastic. This is the Tarantino, Tarantino, Tarantino movie, yeah. yeah. Um, it's because I have a young child at home, it's the first time I've been to cinema in about a year. Yeah. So it was Amazing. quite nice for me today to go and sit and have a little bit of popcorn and enjoy the film. It's a mad film, as you'd expect from Tarantino, but it's very, very, very enjoyable. What's, are you a popcorn and coke man or what's the...? Uh, no, popcorn and sparkling water. Right, right. <laughs> the athlete, the athlete, <laughs> didn't you? Just can't Not let like it go, the rest of us snobs. Three litres of coke to wear right yeah. here like yeah. this. Old sparkling habits water. die hard and all that, you know. Um, the thought of going to the cinema is an absolute delight. I haven't right. a couple of years myself <laughs> for the same reason. Oh, wait, wait until you go, I'm sure you get into it in the diecast, wait until you get into the endless parade of kids' movies. This is happened to you as well. <laughs> for three or four years, the only films you'll see like you'll see the Oscar nominations coming yeah. in in January or whatever it is and you'll be like 
all right, I haven't seen any of them. And I get to like best animated feature. You'll have seen four out of the five. Yeah, yeah. And you're yeah, like, yeah. Oh, do you know what? I can Secret get Life of Pets 15. I'm okay with that. Ring the, 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 the water will well and truly gone by then. Maybe hit <laughs> flask or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you, to be fair, you've managed to sidestep my uh, my initial question on, about sorry, whether sorry. you uh, whether there's much recognition. No, or, no, 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 no. What about at home? Don Corks must be. Yeah, but look, I think people are always people are always nice to ask, say, "How are you? Welcome home." Or you live in a home. Couple of questions, but. Um, I think when you're not playing and you're not dropping clangers on the weekend, people are normally quite nice. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, the career you've had is like a phenomenal career. It's, there was something that came up actually on the back of um, the Roy Keane chat we had in uh, the Borgash Energy Theatre a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking about obviously he made some comments about John Walters, but questioning the career he had. Like John Walters had a great career. Mm. It's in the 0 0.01 percent of mm. football careers that people would have, yeah. no more than yourself. I, how do you? At this remove now, like obviously retired a little bit of you, uh, do you do you reflect now and consider what sort of a career you had or where you at on all? Yeah, I don't, I don't really. To be honest, I think um, maybe sometime in the future, maybe it's still a bit raw for me at the minute. Um, uh, you know, it's hard to understand where where Roy's coming from. You know, if, if he judges somebody's ability to have an opinion on how many medals you have. Um, does that mean that, that, that that's a measure of the man that you are? Which is kind of what he was questioning with John. Um, and if you medals make you, and that's kind of sad if Roy thinks that you know medals make you what you are. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting a bit bit strange and a bit deep on it. Really, to be honest with you. But well, he, he, to be fair, the context is that he did say, "Does he sit at home counting his medals?" That would be a, a short process or whatever. So I think that was certainly a part of it. Yeah, I think it was, and I just think that like you know. Can judge a football career any way you want. For me, I think it's always: Did you give everything that you had? You know, did you did you leave it all out there? And whether you won 50 medals, made X amount of money, or you only made it as far as you know local level football, as long as you kind of maximised your um, your potential and you did everything you could do. And I don't think anyone could level that at John. I've known John since we were 19 years of age. He came on loan to Hull when we were kids, and uh, he was one of the fittest human beings that I've ever come across in football. Um, and every day he, he, he tried so, so hard, and he worked ever so hard, and he was a very, very good professional, very, very good teammate, and he was someone that you're happy to have in your team. I had him, at, obviously, in, at, at home when we were kids, um, and I played with him at Ipswich as well, and obviously for Ireland, so I, I know John reads me well. So for Roy to question John's uh, mentality or question John's character, really, I suppose, is what it would be, um, and then to measure his character on how many medals he has, I think is a touch unfair, to be honest with you. But that's a text from Roy Keane that's after uh, landed in your, uh, in your inbox mine? there. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, he, it was funny because we had Kenny Cunningham in last year at some point and we were having a similar sort of conversation and I just assumed that everybody who's played the game to your level reflects on their career with like fondness and uh, everybody has regrets, right? But like all, ultimately fondness and Kenny was kind of saying that wasn't really the case for him at all. It was like, it was just filled with regrets. Um, What's your own sense? Like, Kenny said it, his yes. career was full of yeah. regrets. Yeah, particularly in, a, in an Ireland uh, context, he was very regretful about a couple of um, individual errors that he would have made, and it seems that that was, I don't want to misquote him, but it seemed like that was tainting his entire career almost. God, no, geez, I couldn't, no, I wouldn't look at that at all. I'd look at the complete opposite, you know. I think if I made mistakes, they were honest mistakes. You know, I tried to do the right thing. Um, with the benefit of hindsight, you can say maybe I should have done something else, but at the time you try to make honest decisions, you try to make uh, truthful decisions uh, to yourself. I think if you make them and you get it wrong, well then you can kind of shrug your shoulders and go, well, uh, you know, I wasn't a no and it didn't work out for me and I made a couple of ropey decisions, but I remember at the time um, they were made in good faith. So you can't, I don't think you can regret those decisions and I think that, you know, if you if you do something and you kind of know it's the wrong decision but you're kind of going ahead with it anyway then maybe you can regret that but I never did that I always kind of did what I thought was right no, it might have been completely wrong but I can live with that because I thought it was what I felt um, I'm surprised at that about Kenny to be honest with you I've made loads of mistakes in my career but again nothing was deliberate and it is what it is yeah. and my career is over now and the next part of my life starts and it doesn't make me any less of a man it doesn't make me any less of a character um, I got a couple of medals, a couple of promotion medals. <laughs> Maybe I could put them on the table for Roy and he might have been having a conversation <laughs> with him then, you know. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, I mean, I think there are some people that if they had won, uh, they won every single competition they'd ever entered, that there'd still be a level of dissatisfaction somehow. Yeah, yeah but I mean, listen, trophies trophies are, are, are won by teams, right? So it'd be a little a bit like me kind of questioning, Roy, why didn't you ever win an international tournament? Mm. Is that a little bit of a stretch, right? You know, he played in a team that was never going to win it. John played in teams that, that he was never going to win. So, as long as you give your best and you make it to Man United or you make it to Munster Senior League or, or, or League of Ireland or whatever level you make it to, as long as you've given your best, then I think you can look in the mirror at the end of your career and say, well, I had a go and now it's time to move on with my life. 
They could have won the World Cup if he hung around. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Lizzie, don't drag that up again. <laughs> <laughs> we should definitely go there. Right, it's uh, 30 minutes past seven on this Wednesday evening. We're going to keep you up to speed. Uh, Damon's going to keep you up to speed more specifically with all that football over the course of the afternoon. And Richie's going to get you up to speed now with all the latest in the world of live sport. Yeah, as we mentioned, Tottenham's Champions League campaign is underway. There's a 5.55 start in Perez, where it's currently Spurs 2, Olympiacos 2. Harry Kane's penalty and a Lucas Murray strike for Spurs put them 2-0 ahead. Daniel Pedench pulled one back before half time for the hosts and that penalty from Matthew Valbuena has levelled things up less than half an hour to go there uh, for Tottenham to try and pull out a victory uh, Troy Part not involved tonight as he both started and scored for Spurs under 23s in their one all draw with Olympiacos in the UEFA Youth League that was this afternoon to the game in Tottenham's Group B kicks off at 8 and sees Bayern Munich play host to Red Star Belgrade elsewhere tonight Manchester City and their makeshift defence their way to Shakhtar Donetsk uh, City line out with Edgerson in goal a back four of Kyle Walker Nicolas Otamendi Fernandinho and Alexander Zinchenko Rodri, Ilkay Gundogan and Kevin De Bruyne are in midfield and then the front three of Riyad Mahrez, Raheem Sterling and Gabriel Jesus Group C's other games sees Atalanta make their Champions League debut away to Dinamo Zagreb while the most glamorous tie of the night on paper at least is the Group A meeting of Paris Saint-Germain and Real Madrid Gareth Bale and Eden Hazard both start for Real tonight there was a 5.55 start to Group A's other game that's in Belgium where it's currently Club Brugge nil, Galatasaray nil. and in Group D tonight Juventus are away to Atletico Madrid for whom record signing Joao Felix starts up front alongside Diego Costa the other game in that group sees Bayer Leverkusen entertaining Dino, our locomotive Moscow uh, a couple of texts in here feel your pain gents I haven't seen a non-kids movie since Lincoln and that was terrible says Kevin it's a long way to go in terms of a movie as well because I think it's the like original, three or four uh, hours yeah. the original real life documentary of Lincoln is not nearly, uh, nearly does the territory now um, Carrie and Dunboyne wants to know what's Damien's favourite Tarantino film just putting you on the spot now oh god um Reservoir so, Dogs. Yeah, you know the original and best. Yeah, listen, I, you know I just, I, that still pops up every now and again on on, on Sky, and I'll always leave it on if it's on. Would you be Reservoir Dogs over Pulp Fiction? Um, God, I mean that's that's difficult. Uh, Reservoir Dogs because it was the first kind of movie that was shot in the Tarantino way for me. Mm. So I remember as a kid going, "Oh my God!" And the the, the, the old ear cutting scene, really, yeah. you know, which I've watched since back and it caused such uproar at the time. Yeah. But now it's, now it's just like it'd be labelled, it'd be yeah. labelled you now, wouldn't it? As in, like, you know, you might want to. But at the time, that was the biggest thing ever. You know, I watched it again recently, and I I think I was always a Pulp Fiction man, to be honest. I mean, I don't know why. I don't know if is this a, a do people have this debate, Richie, about Oasis versus Blur style? I think a little bit. I think, you know, the latter era Tarantino stuff is not really where you're going to get good enjoyment. I, I wasn't a Django Unchained man. Yeah. I don't think I've even bothered to watch The Hateful Eight, but you're always going to have that. Kill yeah. Bill. Kill Bill. Is it Kill Bill 1 or 2 that you like as well? Because mm. I always thought 2 was the better movie. Than but one. then I think, yeah, don't think you like Once Upon... Once Upon a Time in America then because Once Upon a Time in Hollywood I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood sorry I enjoyed Have it seen it? Yeah. there's no actual storyline is there it's, it kind of meanders a lot yeah, yeah. but it, the, 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 the cinematography the acting the dialogue the, the script, everything is just but it's, it keeps it's, you entertained it's, right? le it's leading in one way because you're supposed to believe I don't want to give any spoilers away yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen this now there's so, no story I mean, you couldn't give it away it's I'm literally also, I'm people also, living their lives in Hollywood it's based, <laughs> it's based around uh, Sharon Tate and uh, oh, yeah. that kind of thing and what unfolded there in Hollywood so if you know the backstory to that you know where the movie should be heading mm, right? which isn't necessarily where we end up it is it, a lot of his movies are I mean I don't want to say they're not about the storyline but they are definitely about the cinematography and the Widow cheeseburgers goes. and the, yeah. the the diners and that stuff aren't yeah. they like that and the yeah. soundtracks and the detail of that I was saying I said before the soundtrack, is good, soundtrack for this is good there, there is an element to me that thinks there should just be a version of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that's just uh, Brad Pitt driving around to the full length songs in the soundtrack because yeah. that in itself the way that's shot because it's very like uh, Bullet with Steve McQueen the way they yeah. kind of did those shots so if they just do that with the soundtrack bosh Right. Yeah. It is a super clever film and it's it's well worth the watch, but I can tell a lot of people wouldn't get enjoyment out of it, you know. I'll be watching it at some point in my at home, no doubt. And uh Carl and Galway wants to know what's the dad cast thing? More details please. We might leave that until we can bore people about that a bit later in the show. <laughs> See if it was Nathan Murphy here going hey, oh, golf for it. Tell, tell me more about this <laughs> golf, golf weekly. weekly. Golf weekly yeah. dad cast and everything and we leave that to later in the show. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Joey Carberry, as we move away from the diecast, admits that he feared he'd missed the Rugby World Cup when he injured his ankle in the first warm-up game against Italy last month. The Munster at half has stepped up his training this week and he is expected to be on the bench for Sunday's Pule opener against Scotland. And Carberry says he was relieved that the injury was not as serious as first feared. Yeah, it's, it's great to be back training and stuff and uh, the ankle's feeling pretty good. Um, so yeah, it's, I'm pretty happy. It was a couple of nervous days in between from when the injury happened, but um, I'm pretty happy just to be here and 
I suppose it's uh, it's great that I've come here. The ankle's kind of healing, so I'm pretty happy with it all. Yeah, it's, it's great to be back training and stuff. Uh, meanwhile, both uh, Rob Carney and Keith Earls remain in contention to face the Scots in Yokohama. The experienced backs took part in training today as they look to shake off respective calf and thigh problems. Jordan Larmer and Andrew Conway are waiting in the wings should Carney and Earls miss the game in Yokohama. And Ireland coach Andy Farrell is confident that the younger Geo can fill in in those roles. Well, like I said to you before, the, um, the, the last uh, Welsh game, uh, when the squad's now down to 31, then you start seeing the, the little units gelling together and, and people taking ownership of, of those, uh, those units and everyone benefits from that. And uh, they're certainly um, putting the best foot forward to, uh, to contribute in, in all the areas of, of their expertise. And uh, uh, certainly, obviously, Jordan's a, a young lad, but um, where he's come in the last couple of years is, uh, is remarkable, really. So uh, I think, um, I think uh, they don't just see themselves as part of the squad now. I think they see themselves as a, 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 a team members that are, are building for something special, hopefully, at the weekend. Uh, 67 minutes on the clock in Greece, still Olympiacos uh, 2, Tottenham 2. Do you, will you watch the rugby? Have you any interest in it? Um... I'd watch it just as a bandwagoner, really, to be honest with you, but no, not, 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 not especially, to be honest with you. Sounded awkward times. For bandwagoners, it's difficult because it's like quarter past eight in the morning. Or, well, oh, you're going to be up so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's like middle of the day now. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I wouldn't. I, I'll watch it because, you know, I'm Irish and we're in a major tournament, so yeah. I'll definitely watch it and I'll kind of pretend I know what's going on. But um, I, I don't get rugby all that much, to be honest Yeah, I know all the rugby people out there are going, what don't you get? But I, I don't know. Yeah. Ref, things happen, a lot of people pile on top of each other and referee raises his hand and Ross was go, oh yeah, yeah, we saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to go, hang on a minute. <laughs> you're, already, you're already on board with how to watch oh, this. Like, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'll be looking around for a dig with you off referee. people. Yeah, exactly. And um, that's, and, and listen, I'm, 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 I'm rugby's a great game and I'm delighted people enjoy it. I just don't know what goes on in half of it some of the times, you know. Yeah, I think that's most of us. Yeah, but you know, at least I can admit it, you know, but you know, you do have to listen to people sometimes ramble on about stuff. And I don't, I don't well, you're in the right spot for that. Um, Richie, speaking of which. Yeah, Armagh have put forward Jarlis Burns to be the next GEA president. The 1999 All-Ireland winning captain is the latest contender to replace current president John Horan at next year's Congress. Former president of the Connacht Council, Mick Rock, was nominated by Ross Common earlier on in this week. Uh, Victor Lindelof has become the latest player to agree a contract extension at Manchester United. The Swedish international centre-half has signed a new deal which will keep him at the Premier League club until June of 2024. Lindelof's made 74 appearances for United since joining in 2017. David De Gea, of course, already signing a new deal until 2023 earlier this week with the option of an extra year. Uh, getting back to matters in Japan, Wales boss Warren Gatlin says he's shocked at allegations surrounding his assistant Rob Howley who's been sent home. He's flown back to the UK to help officials with an investigation into claims about an alleged breach of betting regulations. And speaking today, Gatlin says he needs to refocus the team ahead of their first game. Yeah, it was, you know, look, it was, uh, you know, we got a shock the other day, like I said. Um, and, you know, we, we, it took us a bit of time for, the, for it to sink in and we see the conversations with Martin and, and you know, for us, it's, you know, we unfortunately can't, you know, can't say anything that, you know, potentially jeopardises um, the investigation and we're, we're pretty aware of that. Um, and um, but as, as Martin said, you know, the, there was concern by uh, the coaches and also the players about about Rob and the welfare of Rob. And um, but we have to let the formal process, t you know, take its course. And um, like, I, like I said, hopefully that can continue you know, outside our preparation and our whole focus now has to be preparing for for that Georgia game. Ireland will leave the World Elite Boxing Championships without a medal for the first time since 2007. Belfast Kurt Walker lost his featherweight quarterfinal to Mongolian Southpaw Sembatar Erdenabat by unanimous decision this afternoon. Walker was Ireland's last remaining fighter in Russia. Good stuff, all right. Uh, Richie, plenty more to come from you a bit later in the show. Damien's going to stay with us as well to keep an eye on that football for you. A reminder that it is 2-2 in Greece, a uh, chance there for uh, Olympiakos. But uh, battered away, uh, under 20 minutes on the clock there, and I will keep you up to speed on that as we build the later game today. And a reminder too that every night this week we're giving you the chance to win a nightly prize of a €100 Euro voucher for appliances delivered. .ie. You'll also be in the running to win the ultimate entertainment package of a Samsung 55-inch HDR Ultra HD Smart TV, a one-for-all 32-inch 
inch to 60 inch uh, tilt and turn wall mount Samsung wireless soundbar and a Google Chromecast uh, Chromecast Ultra. So to be in with a chance of winning, simply answer the following question. Simply tell us who scored Liverpool's opening goal in the 2019 Champions League final against Tottenham. Just text the word appliance followed by your name and your answer to 53106 for 30 cent and we're going to announce the winner by the end of the show. All with thanks to appliancesdeliver.ie who have the best range of big screen TVs and accessories delivered in time for the biggest games. Right, we're going to leave that there for the minute. We're going to come back with Johnny Cooper after these. Off the ball on News Talk. Ireland's best mobile network just got better. It's like going to the match with your best mate and then finding out you're sitting beside your favourite ex player and they're like, you know your stuff. And you're like, this is even better. With Vodafone, get 30 gigs of data and even better, a free Samsung Galaxy S10 when you switch to Red Complete. Vodafone, the future is exciting. Ready?